Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit, your event and productivity therapist, coming to you from the heart of Music City in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the event industry, what we have learned from them, and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Today, I'm joined by the best communications and event consultant in the business, Allison Burry. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to share some of our past experiences together. We've definitely been through some unique situations over the years. What are we discussing today? Today, we're going to talk about how to monitor guests that have conflicts. Well, tell us the story. What happened? Well, I'll start off by saying that every wedding we do, I think there's always some type of family conflicts. But with this specific situation, it was actually a co-worker of the groom. And he had a great relationship with this guest, but they were in a physician group practice together. And apparently she had some negative situations with some of the other partners in the group. And so when the bride and groom started sharing that with us, it really started to send off some red flags. And so I brought up some solutions, hoping that they would take to that. One of those solutions is we always try to have appropriate security and also alerting everyone that's involved that needs to know, like, hey, there's a conflict with a guest that will probably come and some of the other guests that will be there. And even though they're all adults, you know, they act like kids sometimes, unfortunately, when emotions are involved. And then you add alcohol on top of that, and then sometimes it's just a recipe for disaster. And so I asked the bride and groom if they would give us pictures of this person so that we could share it with the staff at the venue and then our own internal team, and then again, have a few security guards They actually dressed like guests, so you couldn't even really tell that they were security guards in the first place. But again, it's just really to keep everybody safe. And the most important people to alert were the bartenders, because if this person kept drinking and drinking, which this person did drink and drink, and I actually went up and had a conversation with this guest, and I somewhat got cornered (laughs) discussing nothing, but... I just wanted to make sure that that guest wasn't getting a little bit too tipsy because that could cause issues and cause problems. So again, making sure that everyone has a picture of the guest and knowing what's going on. The other thing I will stress is that, you know, I manage these situations from a very professional and adult-like angle. You know, whenever I send out a picture and an email, I say that this is highly confidential information because the client would would be mortified if this person found out that we were doing all of these things behind the scenes to make sure that a fight didn't break out. So I'm always very cautious of that and very professional and letting other people know that are going to see this email like, hey, this is confidential. Like, don't pass this picture around internally laughing and like making jokes like this is a serious matter and usually if you communicate that way from the top down everyone is very they are confidential they're serious about it they're not immature Um, and again like having a picture and making sure that they know who the other people in the practice were were important too just to keep their eye out and luckily nothing happened at the wedding and no one fought and it was a an awesome day but again when you have emotional feelings like that I really recommend prepping ahead because what if something did break out like that would be horrible 
Um, and then Allison, this was actually your very first wedding with us and knowing like what you know now, years later, like what was one of your takeaways from your very first wedding? Well, after all of the experiences that we've had today, looking back on it, I definitely appreciate um, the value that country clubs provide to us. They have so much of their rentals and everything in house and their staff is always so friendly and they make it such a breeze for us to be working there. And sometimes it can be cookie cutter, but that's where our fun jobs come in to provide the creative design and all of the decor and make it really unique and stand out. Um, And something else that I also learned was how vital and important it is to make a really good impression with your clients because we actually see this couple pretty frequently uh, at Christmas parties and different things that we help them plan. So to make a good impression with them and they remember us and remember how sweet that us and all of our team are is very, very important. So everybody has positive memories from that night. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, a great way to start off a relationship with a couple, especially when they're starting their life together, is their wedding because it is so personal. Like everyone remembers their wedding planner and they remember if you do a great job and they remember if you don't do a great job. (laughs) And so having those communication skills and making sure that everyone is on the same page is so, so, so important. Um, And then was... Was there anything else that you remembered that is a, another takeaway? <laughs> well, definitely. There was one other big learning experience that I think we both learned from at the end of the night. Uh, it was when we took the gifts back to their house after the wedding. And we loaded up both of our cars with all of their presents and drove back to their house. And it was raining, which wasn't a big deal at the time. But we got to the house and we were loading everything into their house and into the garage. And when we went to leave, Angela, remember that your car wouldn't start. (laughs) And the two of us were standing outside in the pouring down rain. And I had to like inch my car up as close next to yours as I could without getting it in the grass. And we're standing outside getting soaking wet while we're YouTubing how to jump a car. And we had to figure it out. We did figure it out and we got the car to start. But that was definitely a learning experience for us. And it's something that I will never forget, especially from the first wedding we did. And I was like, what have I gotten into? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that, that brings up good stories. Um, so always carry jumper cables. <laughs> My dad taught me that, so I always had jumper cables, and I do remember, you know, it. God, it was pouring, and I think it was like three o'clock in the morning, and thank God we both drove to their house, and they had enough gifts and personal items that we had to unload it in their garage, Um, and I remember their garage being, it was a two-car garage, but it was more like one-and-a-half-car garage, (laughs) because trying to pull both of our cars in there... And then, I mean, literally, like, this is where you really utilize your side mirrors to make sure you're not going to hit anything. And again, thank God their garage was, like, clean and tidy and there wasn't crap everywhere. Um, But, yeah, we were YouTubing how to jump a car off at 3 o'clock in the morning because it wasn't like I was going to call my dad at 3 a.m. and be like, hey, Dad, how do you do this? Knowing him, he would try to drive there and help us. Mm -hmm. But, hey, we, like, worked together as a team. We figured it out. Um, But I will say that was just the start of my car problems. My car was like, I think, eight years old, and it had like over 200,000 miles on it. And the service, like the check engine light had been on, and I thought I just needed an oil change. I really didn't know. Like, it drove fine. Like, I didn't know what the problem was. And so um, I think I had like another week or two, and I was going to go out of town and the car was going to go to the shop and and get maintenance. And actually, I was driving to my parents to drop my dogs off before I went to the airport. And um, I was on the phone with a floral designer and a client. And all of a sudden, as I started to get off the interstate, it was like five minutes from my parents. And flames like started coming out of the hood of my car. So my car caught on fire. And I very calmly told the client and the floral designer, um, I'm having car trouble, so I'll have to call you guys back. And I very quickly pulled over. I turned my car off. 
like grab my bag in the front because of course it had my laptop and my iPad in it and then my dogs who at the time were not on a leash and I ran as fast as I could away from the car and the messed up thing it was like the middle of the day and like cars kept going by me and like no one stopped but whatever um so I called my dad and he came up there with a fire extinguisher (laughs) and I mean, the car, like, didn't blow up or anything. He had it towed, and apparently, like, there was a leak, and that's what started the fire. I ended up, like, paying to fix the car, and then it still had trouble, so I ended up having to drive a rental car for a little bit of time until I could actually find the time to go find another car. So, the whole point to that story is don't wait till the last minute when your check engine light comes on. Because if you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of other people, right? I mean, we're both, I think, such procrastinators when it comes to taking care of ourselves because we're always putting other people first because we love our clients. But we probably would have gotten home a little bit earlier that night slash morning if my car had not died. Um, so, yeah, that that was a crazy first experience and do you ever feel like what have I gotten myself into (laughs) not anymore now I expect different fun and crazy things to happen but the very first time I was like the two of us girls trying to figure out how to jump a car in the pouring down rain at three o'clock in the morning is it was very funny (laughs) yeah it it was um so again pay attention to your check engine light don't procrastinate especially if you're a chick Um, I just think guys are better at like fixing car things. I'm definitely not good at that. And I have AAA. I think you have AAA too. Yes, I do. So AAA is great. But what other than uh, paying attention to our cars was your biggest takeaway from everything that happened that day at the wedding? I would say, again, the takeaway would be going off of the tip, um, just communicating with all the people that are involved, the right people, Um, and making sure that the staff understands that, you know, something could go wrong and making sure that if there are guest conflicts to make sure that you plan for those and you discuss what could happen with all the right people. Definitely. That's very important. And can you share with our listeners um, some different products and resources that you have available to help wedding and event planners? Yeah. So for our listeners, Be sure to visit our blog. Um, You can get to it through our website, AngelaProfit.com. There's always great articles and resources available there. And be sure to sign up for tips and resources. If you scroll to the bottom of the website, you can put your name and your email in there. And there's some things that we send out that we only share with the people that follow us through email updates. We often do free webinars with different types of subjects to help people in their business. We also have several live events coming up throughout the year. So be sure to check our website and social media for all the great resources that we offer. Cool. Well, Angela, thank you so much for sharing all of your valuable advice with us. And I can't wait for next week to tell more of our incredible experiences together. Well, and thank you for joining me, Allison. And to our listeners, thank you so much for joining us today on Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design. Tune in next week to learn more from our past experiences. And if you found this podcast helpful, please share it with other event professionals and be sure to subscribe to the podcast today so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. I'm so passionate about helping other event professionals, and with my background in psychology, I really appreciate that our best selves are developed from real-life situations that we're sharing on this podcast. So again, thanks for listening. Be sure to tune in next week. Like Allison said, we have more tips for you to grow your business. And if you have a question or an unresolved issue that you would like guidance on, connect with us on the website, AngelaProfit.com. And until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.